Dear brothers and sisters, praise the Lord. It's time to read the Bible again. Today we'll continue on Matthew chapter 6. We're starting from verse 19. Matthew chapter 5 to 7 is the Sermon on the Mount, which is the constitution of the kingdom of heavens Jesus gave to his disciples. From the start, he illustrated the virtues that a kingdom people shall have, which are explained to us in the Beatitudes. That then he told us the testimonies the kingdom people shall have. They are the soul of the earth, they are the light of the world. Then Jesus described how they shall live their lives. The principle is to surpass the requirements of the Moses law. Jesus said that he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. Moses' law regulates man's behaviors. The law of the kingdom of heavens is to regulate man's mot motivation. As the regulations for man's behaviors, what you can do, what you cannot do, therefore, there were many rules and regulations as the laws today for men to follow. But to regulate man's heart, heart's motive, you need only to lay down the principal narrative. In the criterion on how they shall live their lives, Jesus first mentioned what they shall not do, the bad things, and then he commanded some good, uh, good things that they should do. In chapter 6, the good things they they shall do are uh, giving to the needy, prayers and fastings. After this, Jesus told us the relationship between the kingdom people and the world. In the church age, through the grace of Jesus Christ, we receive the eternal life of God, but we still live in this world and cannot be separated from it. Just as Jesus said in the Gospel of John, we are in the world, but not of the world. Our living, our existence are still connected to this world. But on the other hand, we are also the people of the kingdom of heavens. So the rest of chapter 6, Jesus told us how to properly define our relationship with the world. In the constitution of the kingdom of heavens, Jesus gave out the principal narratives. From, verses, from verse 16 to verse 24, Jesus told us, don't be greedy. From verse 25 to 34, he taught us, do not worry. When you have gained something in this world that you, you depended on, you do not become greedy in it. And when there's some lacking in your life, do not worry. These are two principal matters. Today, we'll take a look at the matter of do not be greedy. Verse 19, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Bao Wu could mean treasure, or the place to put the treasure in, store. Very interestingly, the Greek word for store up and treasure is the same, same word. One is a verb and the other one is a nun. That is, whatever you treasured and very precious to you, you don't want to use it. That is, store up. Jesus said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves steal. The treasures at that time, one category is referring to fine linen, clothes, and cloth. If you store this on earth where moth would eat them up, you could not store them up for too long. Naturally, moth would eat them away. Another category of the treasure was the currency they used, gold, silver, or bronze. All this, they would get rusted and destroyed. That is, 
this treasure will change its composition all by themselves in time, just like today's currency. It will devalue it. It will devalue, and also there might be thieves break in and steal your treasure, kind of like we put our money into the stock market. All of a sudden, they are gone. They are stolen. So Jesus said, "Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth." Verse twenty. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. You shall not store up treasures on earth, but you shall store them up in heaven. Here we must notice Jesus did not condemn storing up treasures, but it's a matter of where do you store them up. A lot of times, young people will have a misunderstanding when they when they read this verse. They thought they should spend all their money, enjoy their lives, live their lives in the moments. This is not what Jesus te- teaches. Taught, there is nothing wrong to store up treasures. The question is, where do you store them up? If you store them on earth. There are moth to eat, to eat it, or rust to destroy it, or thieves to steal it. Jesus said, "You should store up treasures in heaven, where no moth, no rust, and no thieves is a safe place." Exactly how do we store up treasure in heaven? Of course, first you need to have treasure, and you have extra to store them up. Then you shall change its earthly usage to heavenly usage, just as in Matthew chapter nineteen, verses sixteen to twenty-two, recorded. A rich young man came to see Jesus and ask, "What good thing must he do to get eternal life?" Verse twenty-one says. Jesus told him, "Sow your possessions and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven." So, if you have treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and thieves will steal, but if you sell them and give give them to poor, then you are storing up treasure in heaven. Also, in Luke chapter sixteen, verses one to thirteen. Talk about an unjust steward. Chapter sixteen, verse nine says, "And I said to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may re- receive you into an everlasting home. The treasure you have on earth, they are temporary. At some point of time, they become useless." But if you use this treasure to make make some friends to bring them to the Lord, they may receive you into eternal dwelling. This is also why when Paul was doing his ministry, he encouraged the uh the Gentile churches to donate to the poor in the church in Jerusalem. It's spec um. Especially if we can take care of the needy ones in their daily lives, that's storing up treasure in heaven. Why is it so? What? Why is it so important, ah,、uh, to store up treasure in heaven? Verse twenty one, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So what God really wants is not our treasure. But our hearts, for out of our hearts spring the issues of life. And treasures are the things our hearts valued. Therefore, wherever the treasure is, wherever your heart will be also. The common understanding of the word treasure refers to material possessions, but through the maturing in life, the things you treasure might become different. For instance. When we were young, our common problem was lack of money. Therefore, financial security became the most treasure, the best treasure for you. 
gradually you have stable job, you have social standing in your midlife. You may want to establish your own career. Then your treasure may be your ability, and then till your late age, maybe you have money, and you don't have the ambition for any career development. Maybe what you most care for is is time. At our different stage of life, we'll have different recognition of what is our treasure. Jesus says, "Where your treasure is." There, your heart will be also. So, when you are young and poor, money is your treasure. Then you should offer more money to the Lord. When you store your money in heaven, your heart will be there also. When you are at your middle age, ability is your treasure. Then you should put your abilities in the church. And when you get to your old age, the most lacking is the time. Then you should even more diligently to put all the time you have before the Lord to establish the intimate relationship with the Lord. For where is your treasure, there your heart will be also. Verse twenty three, twenty two, and twenty three. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. Where your treasure determines where your heart will be, and where your heart determines if you have a good eye or bad eye, and there determine whether your body is full of light or full of darkness. Jesus' logic here, he said, your eyes are the lamp of the body. Lamp is not light, but it's a tool that shines forth light. What is light? God's eternal life in in us is the light of man. When our heart is the throne of grace, our heart will be filled with the light, and the light will shine forth through your eyes. For your eyes are the lamp of your body. If your eyes are good. 嘹亮 The Chinese Union Version translate translation is not good. It actually means single. So if your eyes are single, your whole body will will be full of light. Our treasure is in heaven. Then our hearts will also be there. And then we need to go further and keep our eyes single. That is to put all of our Focus on the Lord in heaven, because we have the light of life. So the light shines forth from our eyes, will bring our whole body into light. If your eyes are bad or 昏花 most translated as evil. If your eyes look at the Lord, then your eyes will be single. If your eyes look at the world. There are so many things attracted our attention. Very quickly, your eyes become evil because your eyes cannot focus and see too many things. Then the light cannot shine forth from your eyes, and your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness! Here is a warning: If our eyes are not single, but looking around, whatever you saw, you desire it, then your eyes become evil, and your whole body become dark. Eventually, when the light in you is darkness, because what you saw attracted your attention, unknowingly you put your treasures in the world, and your heart went there as well. Once your heart went into the world, the light in you became darkness. How great is that darkness? Verse twenty four. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mammon. 
So actually, this is a matter of ownership. When God made man in the beginning, God wanted man to represent God, to have dominion over all the created things. God should be the master of man, but Satan came in and damaged that relationship. Satan wanted men to worship him and wanted men to submit to him as their lord. After men's fall, God prepared redemption for men, especially in the New Testament. Especially the New Testament has come. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, came to the world, died on the cross for all of our sins, and purchased all of us, the New Testament believers, with his, uh, with his precious blood. Jesus paid the price with his life and purchased us. Therefore, he shall belong. We shall belong to Christ. But Satan would not let it, so he used the world, used monetary gain, to draw our hearts and let us fall into his trap and became a slave to the wealth. So for this matter, for so for this matter of uh, not be greedy, at the end it could it concludes to who is the master. No one can serve two masters. There's no middle ground there. It's either Christ or Mammon. You cannot serve the Lord and serve Mammon, dear brothers and sisters. Jesus summarized a very good logic here for us. It all starts with where do you store up your treasure? If you store up your treasure on earth, your heart will also be on earth. Then your eyes will be evil, and eventually you'll become a slave to Mammon, and your whole person will be in the darkness. Another logic is: if you store up your treasure in heaven, your heart will be in heaven. Then your eyes will be single, and you can serve the Lord single-heartedly. These are two totally different ways, and result in two totally different outcomes. The root of the matter is not whether you store up your treasure or not, but where you store up your treasure. Just like in First Timothy chapter six verse ten, it says, "The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil." The worldly wealth, even though they are unrighteous in Its essence, but you can use them to make friends. You can also use them to help people in need, to bring them to know God. If you don't use your money for the heavenly purpose, you then will become the slave for your money, because you cannot serve God and mammon. God,、uh, may God help us that we can properly use the worldly wealth. God entrusted into us and stored up our treasure in heaven. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Lord, remove the root of greediness from my heart. All we have are from your grace. The ownership belongs to you. Give me a soft and and submissive heart that I am spiritual minded. And be mindful of your heart's desire. Give me single eye to see the needs of the saints around me. Help me to become a person who stored up treasure in heaven. Bless my life and my church life today. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen.